Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 2 of the videos of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. In this video, I'll tell you about the early attempts at classification. As I told you that elements, if you spent a lifetime studying just one element like carbon, you would still not know all about it in an entire lifetime of study. And therefore, in order to make our studies easier, classification was done. In 1800s, just about 31 elements were known to scientists. And even at that time, they were overwhelmed with the amount of knowledge that they could have about these, about their properties, how the elements behaved. And therefore, the first attempts were made at classification. That instead of studying each one separately, why not just group them together and keep the similar ones together so that our study becomes easier. Instead of studying 31 elements, if we could study just about 10 groups, it would be easier. So the first attempt was made by a scientist called Johann Dobrener. He, he was a German scientist and he grouped three elements together according to their increasing atomic weights. And he called these, these are famously known as the Dobrener's triads. Triads is because they were groups of three elements each. Dobrener was able to form only three such triads. These were lithium, sodium, potassium was one of the triads, calcium, strontium, barium was another triad, chlorine, bromine and iodine was his third triad. He could make just three triads on the basis of their increasing atomic masses and what was the relationship that he found and why could he make only three triads? He's found that these groups of three elements had something very uh, different about them. One, they had properties, chemical properties that were similar. Two, when you arrange them according to their increased atomic masses, the first and the third element, the middle element actually was the average of the masses of the first and the third. For example, lithium has a mass of 7, sodium is 23 and potassium is 39. If you add 39 and 7, and you divide it by 2, you get 23. That is, 23 is the average, is the average of the other two. So, you could say in a way that the mass of the element in the middle was somewhere in the middle of the two masses. Average would be, it would be in the middle. It was somewhere halfway and the gradation in the properties also was seen that whatever property was shown by this and this was shown in extreme sodium would have that in between. So in properties, in mass, in everything, the element in the middle was falling actually in the middle. So these strides, it was very fascinating, but the problem was that Dobrainer could not make any more triads than these three. He could make only three triads. Therefore, this attempt at classification may have simplified it only to these nine elements, but we had 31 elements. It wasn't very helpful. And it meant that scientists had to continue working towards this and try to find ways of categorizing these elements so that our study could be easier. So the next scientist now, chemist, was John Alexander Newlands. And he was a musical kind of a man. He loved music and he wanted to see music everywhere. So he started seeing music in elements too. And most fascinatingly, he could actually relate the octaves of music to the elements. How did he do so? If you take at that time now, this was 1865 and this was in 1826. Between 1826 to 1865, the elements that we knew about now had risen from 31 to about 64. So now we had a larger number of elements and therefore classification had to be uh, more extensive. It, had to, it couldn't be limited just to nine elements. But Newland's, the law is known as the Newland's law of octaves, just like the octaves of music. He said that if we arrange the then known elements according to their increasing atomic masses, we find that the eighth element 
has properties which are a repetition of the first element. The eighth element has properties which are a repetition of the first element just like you have the eighth note of music which is a repetition of the first note. The eight notes of music are Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. So, Do. So, or in Hindi it is Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni and Sa comes back. The eighth note is a repetition of the first note. So these are the octaves of music. Newton said that just like the law, just like the octaves, elements, if you arrange them according to their increasing atomic masses, you find the eighth element will have properties similar to the first one. So it is just like the octaves of music, elements also have that kind of a relationship. So we found, or rather he found, that lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine were the first seven elements. Remember, at that time all elements were not known. So therefore, at that time the Nobel, Nobel gases were not known. So uh, he knew only up to fluorine and the next known element was sodium. And sodium, the properties of sodium were a repetition of lithium. It was very similar to lithium. Magnesium was very similar to beryllium. Aluminum was very similar to boron. Silicon was similar to carbon, phosphorus to nitrogen, sulfur to oxygen and fluorine to fluorine. So he found that the next eight elements had properties which were similar to the element eight steps before it. And that's why this was known as the Newland's law of octaves. But there was a problem with the Newland's law of octaves. When he came to the element calcium, after calcium, the Newland's law of octaves, or rather you would say the next element was not similar to aluminum. The next element had properties which were very different. And therefore, this became his limitation that he could, this law was applicable only up to calcium and it could not be extended further to the other elements. And therefore, the periodicity that he said, th this is where the concept, Newlands, if you really see, he's the one who gave the concept of periodicity, that after a certain period, the properties are repeated. So the concept of periodicity was had taken form in the form of Newland's law of octaves, but it could not be extended beyond calcium. So the next scientist was Lothromer and Dmitri Mendeleev. Both these scientists, they were working simultaneously on the classification of elements and they did arrive at certain similar conclusions. Lothar Mayer, he was a German scientist in 1868, he said if we arrange elements according to their increasing atomic masses, then we find that there is a periodicity in the properties. And what are the properties? He said the atomic volume, the melting point and boiling point, they do show similarities. So there is a periodicity, but this periodicity is not of just eight elements as Newlands had said. The periods, they vary in their size. He said there is periodicity, but the periodicity is not fixed to the number eight. It's not like the notes of music. He wasn't that much of a musical man, I must say. So he said that yes, there is periodicity, but the intervals are not fixed. These periods are different. There is repetition of the same similar properties, but there is the periods are different in their sizes. This was a big leap. But the problem was that Lothomer's work did not find much recognition because at the same time, a scientist called Dmitry Mendeleev, who was a Russian scientist, in 1869, he gave his own uh, periodic table and he gave a periodic law. And believe me, it, this work that he presented it kind of overshadowed Lothar Mayer's work who had also almost simultaneously talked of the same thing. Mendeleev also said, talked about the periodicity in properties and he classified the then elements into cert in a certain periodic table. But his work was very much in details and it was a very forward looking periodic table that he presented. Therefore, even today, if you were to select just one chemist in the entire history of chemistry 
and you had to give him the uh, highest credit, you would give it to Mendeleev. Mendeleev would be the genius that science or chemistry has never seen. So by now, his work was so important that it kind of overshadowed Lothar Mayer's work, but these were the two scientists who gave their periodic classification. So in the next video, I'm going to discuss in details the Mendeleev's periodic table. But let me also tell you that Mendeleev's was again at that time all elements were not known. There were limitations. It is not the periodic table that we now accept. The present periodic table is known as the long form of the periodic table or the modern periodic table. But we'll come to that later. In the next video, please return for the Mendeleev's periodic table. Please like my video, subscribe to my channel, please ask your friends to watch it too and uh, if you have any questions please leave it in the comments below and keep returning for more lessons in chemistry. Thank you.